This is a tale of suspense. A blood curdler, if you will. This is our first outing into the world of the macabre. And high time, too, I must say. Tonight's story is called Monster of His Making and was penned by Henry Treat Sperry. It appeared in the April 1938 issue of Dime Mystery Magazine. We must warn you now that tonight's presentation has somewhat mature overtones and depictions of violence, and listener discretion is advised. To quote the great radio dramatist Arch Obler, creator of the long-running Lights Out series, if you frighten easily, turn off your radio now. If you've been with us for our earlier episodes of Pulpourri Theater, you'll know that we are doing our best to bring you a wide variety of stories for your listening pleasure. So far, we've presented dramas from the science fiction, crime, and western genres, entered the realm of the supernatural, and told you a tale of the average In episodes of But I'm frontier. still standing. But let's get started on our story for tonight. Dr. James Kellen is a world-renowned physician and surgeon. He is the head of his own private hospital and is sought out for consultation on many strange cases. For he has made it his life's work to cure all who come before him. Naturally, he has not been successful 100% of the time, but his limited failures have yielded tremendous leaps in medical research. We join Dr. Kellen as he prepares for surgery on a case unlike any other in his storied career, and one in which, had he but known the consequences in advance, he would have gladly welcomed failure. Listen now to Monster of His Making. Dr. Kellen, the boy is prepared for surgery. Thank you, Dr. Eccles. Please remind me of the particulars. It has been a very long day. A cardiac case, wasn't it? Yes, doctor. Here's his card. I'll read it to you. Carlos Del Cayo, age nine, clinic patient, last six months. Primary diagnosis, aneurysm. Doctors McPhee and Haggard saw the patient on the following visit and postulated an auricular leak from a feeble diastolic murmur. They note, not precisely characteristic, and all other symptoms of the syndrome are lacking. Request Dr. Kellen to- Yes, yes, I remember now, Ronnie. A most puzzling and interesting case. Do you know, I still haven't the foggiest idea of the problem. He's an orphan, was sent here complaining of chest pains, but there's something decidedly wrong here. Yes, they thought they had it. I suspect Oh, don't look at that. Please go see the chemist. The test is ready. Yes, doctor. Carlos, don't be afraid. You're going to have a little rest, and when you waken, you're going to be just fine. Go ahead with the gas. Don't go pushing too many buttons, or who knows what'll happen. Finders keepers, am I right? He's out, Doctor. We're ready. Scalpel. Scalpel. Get the rib spreader in there. Ugh. Now back away, nurse. Let me take a look. Dr. Kelland! Oh my god! He doesn't have a... Get out! All of you, get out! What? But doctor! I... 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 Do as I say! Leave me alone with the patient! Go! Now! It's impossible! It's against nature! It's true! The 
vagus nerve is shriveled to nothing but it functions. This vena cava seems to be taking the place of the right oracle. Then the coronary artery here is doing the work of the ventricles. It's unbelievable, but it must be true. Carlos, what sort of creature are you, my lad? What manner of being will you become when you grow into manhood? You who have no heart. Dr. Carl Cardell's office. No, I'm sorry, Dr. Cardell is in consultation right now and cannot be disturbed. Thank you. Dr. Carl Cardell's office. No, I'm sorry, Dr. Cardell is in consultation right now and cannot be disturbed. Thank you. Dr. Carl Cardell's office. No, I'm sorry, Dr. Cardell is in consultation right now and cannot be disturbed. Thank you. Mr. Kellogg? Dr. Cardell will see you now. Yes, thank you, nurse. Right through the door, sir. This is the doctor's private office. Good morning, Mr. Kellogg. <laughs> or should I say, Dr. Kelland? It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yes, Carlos. My name is Carl Cardell, Doctor. The little boy, Carlos Del Cayo, on whom you operated 25 years ago, is no more. I had my name legally changed, as you know. But perhaps you have decided to capitalize on your knowledge of my past, hmm? Maybe you have thought of a way to fill the coffers that your incompetence as a surgeon have emptied? That's just like you, Carlos. You would think that. What do you want, Kelland? I'm a busy man. <sighs> I need to sit down. I'm here about Helen, Carlos. You've read about her accident? Helen? What accident? About a month ago. She went off the road just below Peekskill. She got a few bruises and a bad shake-up, but nothing serious. Or so we thought. Then, ten days ago, she began limping. The x-rays showed a fractured patella. <sighs> We've had our differences, Carlos. But surely you're fair-minded enough to admit that whatever I did to you, I had great provocation. After all, I nurtured you after you were brought to the hospital. I raised you, guided you, recognized your gifts helped you to become the successful, skilled surgeon you are today. Only you can help Helen, Carlos. Only you can give her back the use of her leg. Save her from the tortured life of a cripple. Carlos! Save your breath, Kelland. I wouldn't lift a hand to save your precious daughter if she were dying. You're listening to the Narada Radio Company's Pole Puri Theater presentation of Henry Tree. Please, I don't know what you people want from me. Stop playing innocent, Dr. Hine. We know what's going on in that laboratory of yours. Yeah, yeah, Hine. We know what's going on down there. Are you going to shut up and let me do this, rabbit? Sorry, Mike. I just want to scare the guy. For God's sakes, Rabbit, you're supposed to use our code names. Both of you shut up. Now look, Dr. Hine, we know Brad Burton has you performing cloning experiments on the animals you locked up in that torture chamber you call a lab. I can assure you, we treat all of our specimens with the utmost respect. There's really no reason to keep me here against my will. Oh, that's where you're wrong, Dr. Hine. We brought you to the angry Anaconda construction site for a very specific reason. As a supposed man of science, how can you be so stupid to allow Bradbird to build this thing so close to where you're keeping the animals? Do you have any idea the lasting damage it'll do to them? Well, do you? Look, why don't you just untie me and then let me head back to the laboratory? I'll talk to Mr. Bradbird. And I'm sure we can all have this misunderstanding cleared up in no time. Ah, yeah, nice try, Hein. But you aren't going anywhere. Hey, Mike, Ingrid, something's going on outside. <sighs> what is it, Rabbit? I don't know. People running around everywhere. Maybe looking for us. Maybe not. 
Looks pretty crazy. All right. Here. Rabbit, stay with Dr. Hines. Robin, it's so walk easy. the perimeter Children of the place with mouse and see what the hell is okay. going on. Sir Darren McDermott, last known survivor at the Safari Adventure Replication Facility. Continuing my personal recordings. It's been... Hell, I don't know how long it's been. I think I stopped counting months ago. Or was it years? Even with the scientific equipment at my disposal, it's clear. There's no going back from what I've become. The radiation from the bombs has taken its toll on my body, twisting and deforming my physical appearance. But instead of falling into despair, I've embraced the change and used it as a basis for my new cloning research. Perhaps this curse will turn out to be a blessing. I just wish Dr. Hein was here to guard my hand. I feel lost without him. This is Dr. Darren McDermott, last known survivor at the Safari Adventure Replication Facility, continuing my personal recordings. I've been continuing to modify the Nucagen Replicator to provide a source of food. It's ironic that the very same device Nuka World was using to create its animal specimens for leisure has become integral to my survival. Using a tissue sample from a cow, I was able to replicate a viable clone, consume it as food, then use the remaining tissue to create another. I figure as long as the Nucagen Replicator continues to function, I'll have an endless supply of food for years to come. Dr. Hein would be proud of my accomplishment. It's sad. It's been so long I've almost forgotten what he looked like. My god, it's been decades now. Maybe even a century or more, hasn't it? Has it been so long? Well, I'll, uh, I'll continue recording later. survivor <laughs> at the safari adventure <coughs> replication facility this is my final recording i've done something horrible <coughs> the thing i created the thing i called the gator claw <coughs> they must be destroyed they can't be tamed they can't be controlled <coughs> their sheer ferocity is like I've ever seen. And now, the Nuka Gen re <coughs> Replicator is out of control. It's producing them at an alarming rate. Please, somebody, anybody, find my passcode or Dr. Hines. <coughs> Shut down the Replicator before it's <coughs> before it's too late. And if this recording should reach Dr. Hines, please. Tell him to forgive me. And mother. I have condoned your crimes, Carlos, in the name of that obsession. And now it is time for you to repay me. A cracked patella is hardly beyond the skill of the average surgeon. It is a bad culture. You know as well as I that you are on the spot where the slightest error results in permanent stiffening of the joint. By God, Del Cayo! You are going to do this thing, or you are going to the electric chair. The mangled bodies of two girls, now buried in Potter's room, will rise up at my bidding and blast you to hell. Don't forget that. I'm not asking you to save Helen from the I'm commanding you to hunt. And God help you if you're successful. It is imperative that I be in my own focus as early tomorrow morning. I am trying out some new elaborations of if you don't object to driving Helen up, sometimes
I can't thank you enough for agreeing to be treated by Dr. Cardell. Well, that was a hard sell. Don't forget that. We argued for hours last night. It's only because I feel he's the one man who can restore your leg. He truly is a skilled surgeon, Helen. Even if he is a completely contemptible excuse for a man. I swear, Father, if- Helen, dear, please. Let's not go into all that again. You'll only make yourself more uncomfortable. Spend the next few minutes until we arrive at Cardell's cabin in quiet contemplation. Just look out the window. All that beautiful foliage, isn't it? <laughs> all right, all right. Mother. I'll behave myself. That's better. And here we are. It really is a gorgeous piece of real estate. Yes, Doctor, bring Helen in here. Set her down on the operating table. Helen, my dear, in spite of your injuries, you look even more ravishing than when last I saw you. Yes, well, you always knew how to sweep a girl off her feet, Carl. And here I am, off my feet and on your table. What happens next? Let us proceed. Dr. Kelland, please remove Helen's cast while I prepare the ether. Helen... Please lie back and relax. That's done. Should I administer the ether, Carlos? No, I shall do that. Breathe deeply, Helen. Breathe deeply. Very much ready, Doctor. What? What are you? The mask? The ether? No, not me. Not. not. You're listening to the Narada Radio Company's Paul Perry Theater presentation of Henry Treat Sperry's thrilling tale, Monster of His Making. We'll be back with Act 3 of our play in just a moment. Hello, friends. This is Phil Boyd Studge, one of the members of the Narada Radio Company. Yeah again today to tell you about the latest crazy bargain from Crazy Crambone's Discount Warehouse in Sandusky, Ohio. Well, Crazy Crambone's done right up his nut this time, bringing you a deal that would be insane not to take advantage of. Approximately 25 cases of genuine Kleindot brand vegetable cocktail juice. Most of us grew up with those entertaining TV commercials for Kleindot vegetable cocktail juice and their familiar jingle, don't get a shock, don't get a noose, it's Klein Docs Vegetable Cocktail Juice. Well, of course, Klein Docs went out of business several decades ago, so just imagine how much nostalgic fun you can have with approximately 25 cases of this world-famous beverage. Um, each carton contains 12 large cans of juice, which, uh, what looks like a quart size but I can't tell for sure. I guess I can't say for sure that the cans actually contain the famous Kleindock vegetable cocktail juice, but at least the cartons say Kleindock in large friendly letters on each side, so that's almost a guarantee right there. Oh, Lord. Oh, the smell. Get it out of here. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, friends, we've experienced a slight technical malfunction here at Crazy Crambone's Discount Warehouse, so we're going to return you right now to our studio. Welcome back to Monster of His Making, 
Tonight's installment of Folkery Theater, starring the Narada Radio Company. When we left off, Dr. Kellen and his lovely daughter Helen had just arrived at Dr. Cardell's mountain home for what they thought was surgery on Helen's damaged leg. But after Helen was put under anesthesia, Cardell seized Kellen and forced him to breathe in the ether as well. Dr. Kellen is just now recovering from his enforced slumber, and we are direct parties to his waking perceptions. you're wearing these black Sidor garments never been they here see something no like this place war in a long dead century do you understand spanish <gasps> the inquisition the torturers who follow torquemada carlos no let me out of these ropes you inhuman sito new friend done no more monsters There will always be other monsters, but you've seen the last of the ones that were here. Sito not worry. New friend teach Sito be strong. Teach Sito be brave. How Sito thank new friend. What's next for you, Sito? You want to stay here or take your family and head out to the wasteland? Zoo Sito home since small. Zoo family home since forever sito want to stay wasteland not safe for sito family or sito i have some friends moving in here but if you play it cool we can all get along can you do that sito trust you sito like more new friends before go here New friend, take. It better shiny thing Sito save. Sito want to give. Thank you, new friend. Sito always remember you. in permanent stiffening of the joint. By God, Del Cayo, you are going to do this thing, or you are going to the electric chair. The mangled bodies of two girls, now buried in Potter's Field, will rise up at my bidding and blast you to hell. Don't forget that. I'm not asking you to save Helen from becoming a cripple. I'm commanding you to do it. And God help you if you're not successful. Very well, Doctor. It is imperative that I be at my lodge in the Poconos early tomorrow morning. I am trying out some new elaborations of Dr. Bayer's method of treating marrow infections in my laboratory up there. If you don't object to driving Helen up sometime in the early afternoon... That will be fine. Until tomorrow morning, then, Dr. Kelland. And kindly give Helen my best regards.
Father, how much farther is it? Just a short way, my dear. Are you in much pain? No, Father. The cast on my leg is just a little uncomfortable, stretched across the back seat like this. This road is pretty bumpy. We'll be there in no time, dear. I can't thank you enough for agreeing to be treated by Dr. Cardell. Well, I was a hard sell, don't forget that. We argued for hours last night. It's only because I feel he's the one man who can restore your leg. He truly is a skilled surgeon, Helen. Even if he is a completely contemptible excuse for a man. I swear, Father, if- Helen, dear, please. Let's not go into all that again. You'll only make yourself more uncomfortable. Spend the next few minutes until we arrive at Cardell's cabin in quiet contemplation. Just look out the window, all that beautiful foliage, isn't it? <laughs> all right, all right. Mother, I'll behave myself. That's better. And here we are. It really is a gorgeous piece of real estate. Yes, Doctor, bring Helen in here. Set her down on the operating table. Helen, my dear, in spite of your injuries, you look even more ravishing than when last I saw you. Yes, well, you always knew how to sweep a girl off her feet, Carl. And here I am, off my feet and on the table. What happens next? Let us proceed. Dr. Kellen, please remove Helen's cast while I prepare the ether. Helen. That's done. I shall do that. Breathe deeply, Helen. Breathe deeply. Finders keepers, am I right? That's right. Mm. Deep breaths. Relax. Let mm. your chest rise and fall. Yes, mm. that's lovely. The rise and fall of your... Mm. What was that, Carlos? Your daughter is out cold, Doctor. Are you ready, Carlos? I am very much ready, Doctor. What? What are you... The mask! The ether! No! Not me! You're listening to the Narada Radio Company's Paul Parid Theater presentation of Henry Treat Sperry's thrilling tale, Monster of His Making. We'll be back with Act Three of our play in just a moment. Joe Boyd Studge, one of the members of the Narada Radio Company, and I'm back again today to tell you about the latest crazy bargain from Crazy Crambone's Discount Warehouse in Sandusky, Ohio. Well, Crazy Crambone's gone right up his nut this time, bringing you a deal that you'd be insane not to take advantage of. Approximately 25 cases of genuine Kleindock brand vegetable cocktail juice. Most of us grew up with those entertaining TV commercials for Kleindock vegetable cocktail juice and their familiar jingle, Don't get a shock, don't get a noose, it's Kleindock's vegetable cocktail juice. Well, of course, Kleindox went out of business several decades ago, so just imagine how much nostalgic fun you can have with approximately 25 cases of this world-famous beverage. Um, each carton contains 12 large cans of juice, with uh, what looks like a quart size, but I can't tell for sure because um, the labels have all come off. <laughs> So, I guess I can't say for sure that the cans actually contain the famous Kleindock vegetable cocktail juice, but at least the cartons say Kleindock in large friendly letters on each side, so that's almost a guarantee right there. Is the can opener here? Where's the can opener? Huh? Oh, here. Just for fun, friends, I'm going to open a can just to see what's inside. And there. Oh! Oh, the smell! Get out of here! Oh, God! <coughs> uh, 
Uh, friends, we've experienced a slight technical malfunction here at Crazy Crambone's Discount Warehouse, so we're going to return you right now to our studio. Tommy, Tommy, no, don't, Tommy, don't drink that stuff. Welcome back to Monster of His Making, tonight's installment of Pulp Marie Theater, starring the Narada Radio Company. When we left off, Dr. Kellen and his lovely daughter Helen had just arrived at Dr. Cardell's mountain home for what they thought was surgery on Helen's damaged leg. But after Helen was put under anesthesia, Cardell seized Kellen and forced him to breathe in the ether as well. Dr. Kellen is just now recovering from his enforced slumber, and we are direct parties to his waking perceptions. See you back with us, Doctor. Great heavens, Carlos. What are you doing to us? And what is that costume you're wearing? These black garments, they represent something my Spanish ancestors wore in a long dead century. Do you understand? Spanish? The Inquisition? The torturers who followed Torquemada? Carlos, no! Let me out of these ropes, you inhuman bastard! Exactly right, Doctor. Now, as soon as your beautiful daughter has recovered, we can proceed. Proceed? What are you talking about? I refer to the operation, of course. Isn't that what we're here for? The operation? You haven't done it yet. Oh, God! Her knee! It hasn't been touched! Good God! You wouldn't do that, Carlos! Even a sadist like you wouldn't do such a thing! <laughs> You're mad! You won't get away with it! You can't! <laughs> I rather fancy I can. Who will be available to testify against me? I presume you informed someone that you were coming up here this afternoon for the purpose of having Helen's patella operated on. Therefore, I shall set Helen's patella with the greatest care. I assure you that I shall do a job that any surgeon in the world would be proud of. Supposing that anyone else would be... <laughs> Got company. I'm certain that it will attract favorable comment from the medical examiner. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, Doctor, but I'm quite sure that on the way down the mountain this evening, you and Helen are going to have a most lamentable accident. Your car is going to hit turn before you reach the valley. To a tragic end. However, you will in reality have a Take your filthy hands off her, you pig! <laughs> Put it down to a perverted taste for the theatrical, hmm? 
I am about to enjoy myself for a rare pleasure. But which, in my case, require rather powerful stimuli. I can say no more. Continue working on her propeller, and it shall be perfect. Then she shall receive a new Desirable flesh, so very subtle. So very subtle. Sure was, but you must be Pum destroyed. Balls. Soon I shall have to open your white skin and let your bright blood flow away. And that will bring me far greater ecstasy than the kisses you denied me. But first, you shall give me something else. Whether you desire it or not, it does not matter. But perhaps, before it is over, you will desire it. For God's sake, man! If you are foul enough to go through with this thing, at least have the decency to kill me first! Well now, Doctor. That was really not a part of my plans. But you do give me an idea. Both you and Helen are going to die of wounds which will appear to have been made by the flying fragments of your car's windshield. I believe the wounds will be abdominal, and I rather think you will take quite a long time in dying, hmm? So, I think I shall give you your wounds now, so that your attention will be somewhat diverted from what I shall be doing to your daughter in a few minutes. An interesting substitute for the coup de grace, is it not? Come on then, you evil, twisted, motherless swine! Do your worst! Doctor, what are you doing with that carbolic acid? No, you shall not rob me of your death by committing suicide! Take this! <coughs> Oh, God! I'm blind! I'm blind! Keep coughing. 
It will help me to locate you. I'm afraid I won't be able to do as neat a job on you as I had planned. But it will be just as effective, and I will enjoy it even more. <laughs> there you are. Uh, take that, Doctor, and that. Uh, uh, uh. My arm, he's cut the rope and doesn't realize it. My arm is free. Take this, Carlos. Turnbuckle Television Cartel, an all-new adventure series, Lieutenant Sturdley of the Antarctic. Starring John Bland as Lieutenant Roscoe Sturdley and Peg Whitebread as his faithful sweetheart Don't daughter, leave anything it's back. sure to thrill grown-ups and kiddies alike as Roscoe and Rhonda fight hey, their never-ending battle against frostbite and polar bears at the frigid South Pole. But it's cold. Yes. Did it feel this cold yesterday? If they thought they had a chance. Yes. Heads up, boss. You'll laugh. You'll cry. You'll wish you'd change the channel when the turn on the television cartoon and Sturdy of the Antarctic. TTC. Something good. Tonight's installment of Culture Theater, starring the Narada Radio Company. A few weeks have passed since Dr. Kellen and his daughter escaped from the mountain home of his deadly enemy, Dr. Carl Hardell. We pick up our story again in the living room of the home Kellen and his daughter share in Manhattan. The cast is off, and the doctors say I'm as good as new. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you, Paul. I owe it all to you. I'm so confused. There's only the tiniest of scars. It looks more like a dimple. Helen is well now. That's all that matters, isn't it? The story I told her, the same story I told to the state police. Well, it wasn't the entire story, of course. After I got her out of the house, into the car, I covered her with a blanket and stuck her back inside. I found Carlos Del Cayo where I had left him, crumpled on the floor and just starting to recover. I stared down at him, and he seemed to sense my presence. He turned his burned face up to me, stared at me with those black, sightless eyes, and laughed. My mouth, badly burned from the acid, and my arms and legs, racked with pain from a dozen stab wounds, were forgotten in that moment. Hatred and loathing for this evil monster were all I could feel. I needed to do one last thing before I sought treatment for my daughter and myself, five miles down the mountain at the state hospital. I picked up a scalpel, stabbed it into the chest of Carlos Del Cayo, deep into the cavity that had no heart. Right 
Goodbye. Helen and her father both experienced a from their the day. Dr. Kelly, wow. in fact, spent the remainder of his life doing good work in medicine, saving lives You're and going to the suffering this. of others. He lived long enough to see Helen married to a good man and make him a grandfather many times over. He passed on after a happy life with only one regret, that he had allowed the boy without a heart to become a man. You have been listening to Monster of His Making, the sixth program of the Pulpourri Theater Series, starring the Narada Radio Company. Featured in the past work, we should have known better. Dr. Ron you and me. Dana Gonzalez as Dr. James Kellen. Nancy Gogler as Dr. Kellen's nurse.